Hello everyone, my name is Ted Kremnik. Um, today I'm going to be talking about one of the applications that we have built on top of Clang. So it's going to be building on all the libraries that Steve talked about uh, this morning. And that is a standalone tool that goes and analyzes your source code to automatically find, uh, find bugs. So I'm going to start from a very high level, you know, 10,000 foot motivation. And the idea is we like to find as many uh, sophisticated bugs as possible using compiler techniques. And the motivation for this comes uh, from a uh, little far away legacy. And that is, when we use compile time warnings, you know, for example, here's a check you know, for the format string of a printf function, when these warnings are actually fairly accurate, um, they can catch some very serious bugs very early on. So this is an actual diagnostic from the Clang command line driver. And just take a look at this, this, this report. It's, it's actually very interesting. Um, the compiler is very precise. It tells you exactly where the problem is. The format string is underlined. And the problem is that there's a format conversion in this format string that's, that's, that's just bogus. And so it's pointing you to exactly where the error is. Now, this error isn't like, you know, totally interesting on its own, but, but think about the implications of this. At runtime, this would result in some kind of unpredictable behavior. It's just kind of, you know, undefined depending on what platform that you're on. But a static technique, you know, the invoking the logic of the compiler, which looks at your code, before you even test it or ship it off to other people, um, can catch bugs very early on, uh, very systematically. And these kinds of things is pointing to where the problem is, so hopefully you know, the fixes are often obvious. So that's where we're, we're coming from. But as we all know, um, compiler warnings are just inherently limited. And sometimes they're so limited that we often just ignore them entirely. Um, sometimes they're just bogus, sometimes they don't tell us anything meaningful. But we like to take that idea of invoking the analysis power of the compiler, essentially, looking at our code in real, you know, real detail to tell us you know, something much more uh, uh, specific about what's wrong with our program. And the kind of bugs that we're interested in aren't just bugs that occur on a particular statement. So this is a very syntactic kind of check. But bugs that require a very specific set of events, a path through your code, so to speak, in order to occur. So these are things like, memory leaks, uh, buffer overruns, logic errors. Wouldn't it be great if we could just automatically find these kinds of bugs automatically? The only way you can find these now are, you know, some tester finds them, uh, Valgrind or so forth, but it requires a very specific test case um, and user experience to find these. So the benefits of static analysis is basically three points. Uh, first, you can get very early discovery of bugs, and I've, I've said this before. Um, basically, the adage is that when, if the, the sooner you find a bug, the, the cheaper it is to fix it. Once the code goes out the door, it's much harder to make changes without having large-scale impacts on the rest of, of your code. And so bugs caught early are cheaper to fix. They, invest, they involve less labor. They involve less people. Static analysis is also extremely systematic. If you think about testing, the only way that you can find a bug is actually have a particular test case that happens to trigger the, the route through your code to the actual problem. But static analysis is basically harnessing you know, the compiler's you know, inexhaustible attention to detail. It doesn't get bored. It just tries to reason about all the corner cases in which your code can be exercised. And this way, static analysis is very good at catching that code that might not run you know, all the time, but when it does, it's just it, you, you just haven't adequately tested it. And the other thing is this, this is so important, finding bugs without test cases. Um, testing is really powerful, it's really useful. We have unit testing, we have all sorts of different ways to try and effectively test our programs. But some code is just really difficult to test. If you think like about it like a device driver, you rely on having the device available and actually even running the device driver. And sometimes the events in order to trigger pass through your code depend on some external thing happening, like receiving a packet with certain kinds of data. Just think about all the infrastructure that has to be in place in order for you to actually test this code well. That said, static analysis is not a replacement for, for testing. There's a lot of bugs that it can't find because it just has a, essentially a finite amount of reasoning power. And I know this is all kind of vague, and this has become more concrete um, in a few minutes. So this talk is going to give essentially a high-level overview of this new tool that we announced last uh, month at WWC which we're just calling the Clang Static Analyzer. Um, this name may change at some other point, but essentially to show that it's affiliated with the project. It's built as a set of libraries that are part of Clang, so it's built on the base libraries that uh, Steve uh, described. 
and it's driven by a command line driver that the, the user can use. So I'm going to give a brief demonstration of the tool uh, on real code, um, then talk a little bit more about you know, the premise of how static analysis works, some more implementation details, go into the libraries a little bit, and talk about you know, where we really like to, to go with this. So this technology is still very much in the early stages, and we're, we're very excited with where it could go. Um, and if you want more information, if you want to download it, it's a whole 100% all open source, um, just go to the Clang uh, webpage. So hopefully this will, this will, I won't have uh, Nate's experience. Okay, cool. So I've got this directory. It's full of a bunch of C files which have very trivial case examples. It's not to, you know, dumb down things to show that it's not useful. It's just so that it makes it very clear what's going on. Um, it contains a simple make file. So this could be, you know, any old project that you have. Um, and it also doesn't depend on make. This could be like an Xcode project, jam, or whatever. It doesn't really matter. So I could just run make and it just builds everything. Um, so there's nothing really magic going on here. So I'm going to do a clean build so that if I were to run make again, I would actually go over all the source code. And the way to invoke the static analyzer is that we run it through this command uh, scan build. And all it does is it tells make, instead of just invoking GCC directly, to also to invoke GCC and the static analyzer. So both, you know, the code is being forked off and analyzed by two different compilers, essentially. So it's pretty simple. And so the static analyzer will essentially see all code within you know, within your project, the same that your compiler sees. I'm going to add this dash V option just so that it pops up a browser window showing me the results uh, when it's finished. So this is a pretty uh, primordial uh, output at this point. But essentially, this is an HTML file. It shows an aggregate of the results, the kinds of bugs that it uh, had, the quantity. You can click through and, 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 and toggle which uh, Areas you want to see, you can sort by line number, file, and so on. Um, and so, clearly, you know, in order for these tools to be useful, you have to have a really good workflow around actually using these tools in practice. And this is really just kind of the early stages of what we think we could we can we can do. So, is that big enough for you guys to see? So this is a really so again, these are really simple toy examples, but this kind of stuff actually happens very much in in practice. So what's going on here is the static analysis tool is actually reasoning